welcome our presenters. Um, we have Casper, Sebastian, and Guillaume from Arms Automotive and IoT Group. And we have Luke Harvey and Stefano from AWS. Hi, thanks, Jor. Sure. Um, yes, so thank you everybody for joining, um, wherever you are in the world. Um, this, this has been a, a great exercise in collaboration between the ARM and AWS team. And we've put together some uh, really interesting content. I hope most of you can follow along uh, instructions. Um, but the workshop will continue to live on uh, after this uh, after this live session, and uh, you can follow along the instructions and play around uh, a little bit longer uh, as you wish. So um, moving along. Um, I was going to introduce the speakers at this point, but I think we've been properly introduced. So thank you, uh, Jaron. So we might as well um, perhaps jump straight into the content. And just before we start with the hands-on session of this um, of this workshop, uh, please bear with us because I think it's important that we set um, the context of what we're trying to, to do and why. Um, and for those of you uh, living and breathing in the automotive industry, this will be probably no news. Um, but the industry is at an inflection point, potentially a once in a generation inflection point at this point in time. Um, this is driven by you know, new consumer expectations, uh, new entrants coming uh, and disrupting the market, uh, and certainly regulations as well taking a, a, huge, um, a huge important role in, in pushing along changes that needs to be fast and the industry is trying to adapt and, and looking for alternatives to move um, into a, a software defined world. Um, one of the enablers to get us there is actually hardware. And um, over the years, the uh, vehicle electronic and uh, electrical and electronic architecture um, has been changing and evolving. Um, it's moving away from the old uh, kind of distributed models where you would find one electronic control unit for um, every, uh, every function being added to the car. Uh, potentially that's taking you know, high-end cars to upwards of 100, 120 uh, standalone ECUs uh, in one car. Um, which obviously adds a lot of complexity and um, as user experience and um, drive, driving automation uh, comes into play, more complex functions um, need to be deployed and um, obviously attaching that to a, a piece of hardware is not, um, it's not scalable, it's not sustainable and um, new architectures are coming and uh, it's starting to be introduced by, by several OEMs. And over the years, we'll see a sh shift that's probably accelerate towards uh, zonal controllers and, and central high-performance computers. Uh, this will not only reduce the hardware complexity, but weight and cost, uh, but it's obviously essential to, um, to deliver software-defined vehicles. Right? Uh, and of course, key at the heart of this transformation is, is, is software. Um, software becomes not only a key uh, component in bringing uh, brand differentiation uh, and potentially new revenue streams, uh, but also it then introduces uh, complex engineering processes. Uh, it raises, uh, potentially raises complexity um, from, from the other hand, moving from the hardware side to, to the software side. Um, so established software development processes today um, and the value chain um, will probably not be able to cope with the required pace for innovation in the industry. Uh, it is important that we uh, look at alternatives to uh, develop, test and integrate automotive software faster. And that it's essential to thrive in the, in the new mobility world. Uh, the good news is that we don't have to reinvent the wheels. Um, uh, we can learn a lot and, and borrow state-of-the-art uh, methodologies like cloud native from other fast-moving industries that have, have adopted that uh, quite successfully. And this is the main context of, of the workshop. 
Um, so cloud native is, is not new and um, at Dev Summit we'll have the opportunity to um, hear about cloud native in several different verticals uh, and, and applications. But cloud native adoption in automotive is still um, in, in its early days, um, we can say that. Uh, bringing concepts like microservices uh, and containers uh, into automotive um, is a journey. And our vision is that this will go through um, three stages and over the years, hopefully become um, something that can make development uh, and testing a lot more efficient for the whole uh, of the industry. So in this diagram, and what you can see is uh, on you know, the first iteration is pretty much where most of the uh, adopters of, of cloud native of containers are today with uh, mostly monolithic designs where you update one container that basically contains um, the, the, the whole of one domain uh, in terms of functionality. Uh, this is typically shows in, in cockpit or other services that need to be connected to the cloud um, and need to be updated frequently like, like mapping. Going further, um, microservices can come in and help um, and help bring more um, granularity to, uh, to, to the workloads and more granularity to updates as well. Um, this, this simplifies deployment testing. Um, this simplifies uh, obviously uh, verification and when we get to safety, uh, also all the uh, aspects of certification of the different codes by only updating a small portion of, of the code. Um, but in the last stage of this journey, what we want, where we want to get to is a place where the existing cloud native technologies can be extended um, to bring awareness and, or become aware of um, safety and real time requirements. And in that way, um, create a framework that is able to deploy this type of workloads of mixed criticality across the vehicle. Um, and this is a journey that we embarked with Sophie. Uh, and I'll come back to that a little later on, on the, in this presentation. But for now, I'll hand over to Stefano from AWS. Thanks, Gil. And uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so uh, definitely what you saw right now, I think from Gil, is uh, what in the industry is referred to as TV, software defined vehicles. That uh, and demonstrate the necessary abstractions, uh, right, from hardware and software layers that really enable all these uh, movements that the market is looking for in terms of software distribution, enabling ecosystem, enabling marketplaces for vehicles in general. But uh, let's see what's the impact uh, of that uh, in the way that software is uh, managed and created in organization. So here you see a traditional CI CD loop. Uh, with what we call heterogeneous compute environment. So assuming you, you are working, for example, on computers, on premise or in cloud with uh, Intel architectures. And, uh, but in the car, you typically have ARM architecture. So how can you, let's say, reduce the frictions from the development and VNV activities in going inside the, a different architecture? So let's look at this uh, pipeline. So um, developers start to have, have a build pipeline, they commit code, and then they build a, a version of their software, execute a unit testing maybe in, in cloud or on their computer. Then they need to build for the target and they go on the hardware and perform basic testing on the hardware. When a developer finished uh, his or her work, uh, the code needs to be integrated and integration workflow start with similar characteristics. So integration testing in cloud or on computer, build again for target and integration testing on target. And then the final validation workflow where you have a validation on an hardware in the loop uh, rig, typically in vehicle testing, and then you can deploy the software. With environmental parity, that is uh, what we are demonstrating today, we can significantly overhaul this, uh, uh, this workflow. And the reason is uh, in cloud, uh, we are leveraging Graviton instances. Uh, our Graviton instances are based on ARM architecture, based on the same universe and one core. 
uh, that is uh, that you will later on implement in the so-called AVA platform, right? So what we do is we compile for R directly in cloud. So and that means uh, you can we can execute a unit and module test on what we define the soft hill in cloud, because uh, that environment has the same characteristics in terms of environment of what you will find in the in the car in terms of a software environment. So we can skip a building for target. We can skip basic test for target, and we just reduce the developer work on a, on the cloud environment in in the software environment of the cloud. Same thing for the integration workflow. You integrate uh, the components. You perform tests in Soft Hill because we have environmental parity, and then you do validation. Validation that can start as well on Soft Hill, and then of course we need to test some of the hardware characteristics in hardware in the loop rigs, for example, IO, physical dimension of the IO, vibration, or other physical characteristics related to an electronic control unit, and so on. And then in vehicle testing and deployment. And But you see how we can really and significantly reduce the steps and the burden and guarantee agility and flexibility in this workflow, introducing environmental parity between cloud execution and edge, 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 edge execution. So, but uh, how is this magic done? So, uh, Gil, back to you to explain uh, explain the architecture of uh, this magic pro workflow. Thank you, Stefano. Um, not sure if it's magic, but this is this is where um, cloud native uh, and ARM based servers meet um, with uh, software frameworks and, and some of our initiatives. So uh, in this diagram, things are getting a lot closer to the actual instantiation of this workshop. Um, and here, what we show is indeed what um, Stefano was talking about. Uh, by eliminating cross-architecture development and testing, um, this is a game-changing um, uh, point for software uh, engineering efficiency. Um, we are saying that virtual hardware, um, virtual prototypes, um, such as those based on ARM fast models, will still have a place uh, in software development and, and, and integration. Um, but architectural parity between cloud and edge can now, um, uh, companies can now much faster uh, test and more cheaply um, achieve their, their testing and verification goals natively running these workloads on, on ARM based servers because. Uh, as Stefano said, you'll be running um, a good portion of your software stack natively on, on ARM-based servers. And th that software stack will actually be a bit accurate um, uh, to the one that you're going to deploy on the edge. Um, so coming back to the initiatives, if you start from the bottom um, on the edge, you see ARM system ready. That's the green highlight for the two bottom layers. Uh, ARM system ready is a program that complements um, SOFI. Uh, system ready certification basically defines the requirements uh, at the intersection of hardware and software to create conditions for uh, true portability of uh, operating systems and, and hypervisors across ARM SOCs. The idea is simple, um, is, is making OS and um, uh, hardware platforms that are compliant to system red specifications, um, basically just boot um, and uh, up and run, uh, be up and running with the OS um, in, in no time uh, without requiring you know, many variants of BSPs to be created, uh, therefore reducing the overall cost for the industry and accelerating uh, development and deployment. Uh, now, if you go up the, the stack, uh, the next step, SOFI. Uh, SOFI stands for Scalable Open Architecture for the Embedded Edge. And there's a lot of content around SOFI um, at Dev Summit, and I encourage you to find out more. Um, we're not going to, uh, into too much detail um, in the workshop here because we want to spend more time hands on. Uh, but SOFI is basically the result of, of a collaboration. Well, it, it will be the result of a collaboration that is starting with um, many automotive industry leaders, um, including Amazon. Um, and this, this basically will bring that vision that we presented at the beginning to life. 
uh, taking uh, and expanding existing cloud native technologies uh, and creating uh, a framework that is aware uh, of its requirements regarding safety and regarding real time um, in, the, um, in the automotive industry. So the result of all these initiatives together, um, we believe can really revolutionize automotive software platforms and accelerate engineering processes in many years to come. Um, but for now, um, let's just look at how these things actually are done in practice. Uh, and uh, for that, I'll hand over to Sebastian. Hi, thanks Gil. Um, so for this workshop, we've decided to, um, to pick a workload that's representative of what you would expect to run on a on an automotive system, but without making it so complicated that um, that we'd spend half the workshop trying to explain it and set it up. So for this, we picked Yolo V2 Tiny. It's an ML model used for object detection. So it will take an image and uh, highlight different objects that it detects within that image, um, such as a car would be doing maybe while it's driving to detect other cars or traffic lights and so on. Uh, we then take that model, um, run it through something called Apache TVM, which is a compiler stack uh, that takes um, various machine learning front ends, compiles the models, and then uses various optimized backends. So uh, optimizing the model to run on GPU, CPU, or MPUs, and so on. And then we package that up into a container based on um, Ubuntu, which will then run in the Sophie stack that um, Gil, you just explained. Um, and um, yeah, and I'll pass over to Luke from AWS, who will explain the, the nitty gritty of the infrastructure of the whole workshop that we'll be running you through. Yeah, thanks, Seb. Uh, so yeah, now that we understand kind of the high level concepts, um, we're about ready to start getting hands on with the workshop. Uh, this diagram shows the entire workshop basically in one slide. Uh, it's a pretty busy slide, and I don't really expect you to kind of grasp everything that's here, but um, you know, gives you an overview of what the next hour uh, plus will be all about. <clears throat> but I'd like to focus on a few things just to keep in mind as you go through the workshop. Uh, the, the first one is that we're going to be running a binary identical container image in both the cloud and on the edge. So that's going to be providing our complete environmental parity at the container level. Inside that container is going to be an example perception application from the AutoWare Foundation, as uh, Seb mentioned in the last slide. Uh, the second point that I want everybody to take away is um, that we're going to be running the same operating system. Uh, the OS is built using the Octo Linux project. Uh, that's going to be running both in the cloud and on the edge once again. Um, I wanted to highlight what you're going to be achieving here uh, because it's really unique for the automotive industry since we're showing you know, this environmental parity concept. We're really showing yet another level of environmental parity. So both at the container level that I talked about in the last point, as well as the OS level. Um, and you know, while it's still possible for you to configure the Linux kernel you know, specifically for the device, uh, which we've done in this case with the AVA developer platform, the Raspberry Pi and the Graviton2 uh, EC2 instance that we are showing here uh, are running identical OS images. And all of this is made possible thanks to ARM's continuous pursuit of setting standards in the industry. Uh, for now, I'm not going to go into the detail on what uh, EWAL is. Uh, this is going to be covered in depth later uh, in the workshop by Casper. But the, you know, the third and the last point I wanted to cover is that the ARM64 architecture is used across both the cloud and the edge devices. So we have our final level of environmental parity here, which is um, ISA parity or instruction set architecture. Uh, the unique case of this workshop is even that we have uh, the micro architecture parity between ARM's AWS, I'm sorry, AWS's ARM-based Graviton2 instances, as well as the AVA developer platform. They're both running Neoverse and one cores. So we also have micro architecture parity there as well. This workshop is showing an end-to-end -end development methodology. We're gonna go from building a container image in the cloud, which is actually using ARM-based code build instances, to deploying this image in the cloud and at the edge. Finally, we're going to evaluate the output with some metrics commonly used to evaluate those machine learning models that Seb was talking about. And you don't have to worry at this point if all of this doesn't make sense to you quite yet. Uh, we're gonna pick it up as we go along in tiny pieces as we progress through the workshop itself. Uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Casper from ARM, who's gonna guide us through you know, implementing the rest of this workshop for real. Casper. Thanks, Luke. 
All right, I'll take over the screen share. All right, um, let's get started with the practical part of this workshop. So uh, if you get caught at any uh, point in time, uh, please do reach out uh, on the Q&A or Discord. Uh, we're here to support you. Uh, and there are a lot of moving parts in this workshop. So if you don't complete it, don't give up. Uh, you'll have access to the event engine for uh, another day. So take your time uh, and go through this again. Uh, let's break this down into uh, some smaller pieces. So the first thing we want to do uh, is to uh, load the instructions. So I'll copy this URL here, paste it into the web browser. And this section here, um, we won't spend any time on because we've talked about this already, but I do recommend going in here and reading more uh, and refreshing your memory. Uh, we will uh, go to at the live event and then to the AWS workshop portal. Uh, we'll want to copy this link here and I'll paste it into web browser, and then we want to copy uh, the event hash code. And then click on email one time password. And I'll input my email address there. And it should only take a, a couple of seconds to get that code sent to you. So once you have that in your inbox, uh, just copy that code and then paste it into the field. And sign in. We have now come to the section where you can set your team name. I'll skip that. Uh, and we want to get access to the AWS console. And then we'll click open AWS console. So I'll be toggling a little bit back and forth uh, between the instructions here, the presentation uh, and the um, AWS console. We wanna verify that we're in North Virginia a US East one, and that's correct. And we can now move on to setting up our Cloud9 instance. We'll click on launch a Cloud9 instance. We'll follow the instructions here. So there's a convenient command. Uh, you can just hit uh, Alt S and it brings you up to the search bar. Uh, we'll type in Cloud9. And we'll hit Create Environment. The name we'll see is Graviton2 IDE. Copy that, paste that here. We can leave the description empty. And then we want to choose M5 large. And all the other values can be left default. We'll just verify here that um, the environment name and settings are correct. Excellent. And let's create that environment. So while we're waiting for this to set up, um, I'll just talk a little bit about Cloud9. So Cloud9 is a cloud-based uh, integrated development environment, um, also um, IDE. Um, so just think about it as a terminal, like any other terminal, uh, but this one just happens to be hosted in the cloud instead of on your desk. Uh, cloud9 is written almost entirely in JavaScript and uses Node.js on the back end. Uh, when we launch this Cloud9 instance, uh, it uh, launches an EC2 instance. 
uh, and EC stands for elastic compute. So we can scroll down a little bit here and we can close the welcome, can accept this, close the welcome and close this here. And then we'll open up a terminal. And next we wanna configure our Cloud9 instance. Um, we'll start by creating an AIM role and IAM is short for Identity Access Management. Um, so please note that we're creating a role and not a user. Those are different things. So we'll go to our dashboard. And then we can hit Alt S and we can type IAM role. We'll select create role. And we want to name it, uh, we want to select um, EC2 and then permissions. And then we'll want to select administrator access. We can leave this empty. And then here we'll put in the role name. So we'll name it cloud9 admin role. Cloud9 admin role. That looks correct and we'll create this role. Next, um, we want to attach this newly created role to our cloud9 instance. So we'll go back to, I uh, can close this here. Uh, we'll go back to this here and we'll uh, click on the T and go to manage EC2 instance. And then we'll select the instance and we'll attach that role to it. We'll click on actions, security, modify IAM role. And then in the drop down menu, we will select Cloud9 admin role and hit save. And next we want to configure the Cloud9 environment. So we'll start by going into the AWS settings. And then we'll scroll down a little bit until we get to uh, AWS uh, settings there. And then we'll uh, uncheck this box here, AWS manage temporary credentials. And then we can close the preferences. All right, and next we want to copy some commands into the terminal and execute them. So there's a convenient copy button here to the right. So what I'll do, I'll just copy this and paste it into the terminal window one by one. And you can hit control V in, in the terminal window here to paste. And then we'll export uh, account ID and AWS region. Uh, those are, and we'll test these as well to see that they were correctly set up. US East one, that's right. And we'll save these into our bash profile. And now let's verify uh, or validate the IAM role. I'll copy this command and we expect IAM role valid. Okay, excellent. Uh, we've now set our uh, Cloud9 instance up correctly. Uh, and we also verify that the role is correct. So we'll go on to the next part um, where we want to uh, clone the repo and configure the environment which brings us to this part here. This is the workload that Seb was talking about. Uh, it's a perception pipeline uh, developed by the Autoware Foundation and it's YOLO V2 Tiny. This repo also contains some uh, additional scripts to help us configure our uh, AWS resources. 
So we'll copy this here and we'll paste it. And then we'll use a tool called um, Cloud Development Kit, CDK. Uh, I'll copy this command here and I'll paste it. And while we're waiting for this, um, I can talk briefly about um, Cloud Development Kit, CDK. So CDK allows us to build highly reliable, uh, highly scalable, cost-efficient applications in the cloud without having to worry about creating and configuring the underlying AWS infrastructure. Um, CDK uses a template file to create and delete a collection of resources together as a single unit, um, which is also referred to as a stack. Uh, and the machine uh, or the workload we chose is a machine learning workload based on uh, TBM. Um, this um, code that we're using is created by ARM's OSS team. Uh, it's part of the open source autonomous driving software stack uh, called autoware.auto. Uh, TVM is uh, ARM's uh, initiative to enable, oh, we can click don't show again there, uh, to enable a flexible way uh, to deploy neural networks. Um, we'll be running YOLO v2 Tiny. Uh, and this is open and available for anyone to download from the AutoWare Foundation Models 2 repo. So while this is setting up, we can take a look at the, the next step here. So we'll come back to just verify that we get this printout in a little bit. So in this workshop, we'll, we'll skip setting up the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, but I do recommend um, anyone who's interested uh, to go back and enable um, running the um, OS on, on this target. Um, Sebastian put these uh, steps together really nicely uh, and we verified that this, this works uh, like intended. So again, uh, after the workshop, and if, if you have a Raspberry Pi 4, come back to this section and uh, set up your, um, your Raspberry Pi. Okay, great, this is finished and we get the printouts there like we expected. So now it's time to create the uh, build pipeline in the cloud. I'll move to the next slide here. And I'll get back to the details of this in just a little bit. So we'll create a CI CD pipeline for building containers, which uh, then will deploy the output container image into a container registry. Um, and I'll explain some of uh, the working parts in just a little bit. Um, so we'll scroll down and we'll run this command CDK, which is a cloud development kit, uh, sorry, cloud deployment kit. Uh, no, sorry, it is my bad. <laughs> a lot of abbreviations here. So it's cloud development kit. So we'll copy this here uh, and we'll paste it in the terminal. Uh, and while we're waiting for this uh, to finish, um, I can talk a little bit about the different parts in the, oh, and we have to type uh, yes and then hit enter or else it won't start. Okay, so um, AWS code pipeline. Um, so this pipeline here uh, consists, let me move this out of the Uh, consists out of um, uh, AWS code commit, uh, which is a secure, highly scalable managed source control service that hosts private uh, Git repositories. It eliminates the need for you to manage your own source control system or worry about scaling its infrastructure. You can use code commit to store anything from code to binaries. And then we have AWS code build. It's a fully managed continuous integration service that compiles source code, uh, runs tests and produces software packages that are ready to deploy. With code build, uh, you won't need to provision, manage and scale out your own build servers. And then we have the Amazon Elastic Container Registry, Amazon ECR. Uh, it's a fully managed container registry that makes it easy to store, manage, share, and deploy your container images anywhere. It also eliminates the need uh, to operate your own container repository or to worry about the scaling, uh, or worry about scaling the underlying infrastructure. 
All right, with that, let's go back uh, and see uh, how this is coming along. So we can go back to our um, console. We'll hit Alt S and we will search for cloud formation. And here we can see the stacks um, and this one here that we're waiting for to complete is still create in progress. So let's see, are there any uh, questions uh, so far in Discord or, or any live questions? This would be a good time to answer those. I think so far everybody's good. All right. If anybody has any other questions about maybe the um, uh, infrastructure or something, you can ask as well. There will be parts of this workshop which um, uh, we're just waiting for something to configure. Uh, so now is an excellent time to, uh, if you don't have a question now, you can think about a question for the next little pause that we have. Yeah, even uh, comments and feedback is always appreciated, of course. So if we click in on the YOLO application pipeline, we can uh, see when it was created, um, the current status, and uh, we can go into events and we can see the different parts that are happening uh, while this is being created. So quite convenient to get, get a good overview of what's going on. All right, while we're waiting for this, uh, we can uh, open up a new uh, view. Uh, I'll hit uh, Alt S again to get to the search tab. Uh, we'll type in code pipeline. And this is what we're setting up right now. So here we can see uh, that this has failed, um, but this is to be expected because right now we haven't pushed any of the code that we actually want to compile to the cloud. It's just an empty repo. So we can go back to the cloud formation to see if it's uh, set up all the stacks. It's still created in progress. So we'll wait a little bit longer. Okay, excellent, great, complete. Uh, we can now move on to the next step, uh, which is to deploy the embedded uh, Linux AMI in the cloud. AMI is uh, short for Amazon Machine Instance. Image, Amazon Machine Image. And that brings us to this part here. So now uh, I will speak uh, about Ewell in, in just a little bit. We'll just um, kick off um, booting the instance first. So let's take a look at the instructions and we'll hit next and we'll to deploy a Yocto Linux AMI on EC2. We will copy uh, this command here and we'll paste it into uh, cloud nine. And then we'll scroll down a little bit further. And we uh, uh, can take a, a, a look at, at the view, uh, the EC2 in a little bit. But first I'd like to speak uh, about eWall. Um, so eWall uh, is short for Edge Workload Abstraction and Orchestration Layer. 
I'll, I'll say that one more time because this is a big one. Uh, edge, workload, abstraction, and orchestration layer. Uh, and EWIL is ARM's initiative to provide users uh, with a standards-based framework to conveniently deploy and orchestrate workloads at the edge. Um, what we did right now is that we're running EWIL in the cloud uh, in a AMI, and then we'll be running the same uh, um, OS at the edge. Um, under section seven, both under deployment on Raspberry Pi and deployment on Ava developer platform, there are links to um, more information about Meta Ewell and Ewell documentation. Let's take a look at um, how the AMI is doing. So we'll go to our AWS console, we'll hit Alt S and then type in cloud formation. We can see that the Docker host EC2, which we just launched, is now create complete. So we're now running our custom embedded Linux image in the cloud. I, that, that's pretty neat if you ask me. So now we want to SSH into this uh, AMI. So let's go back to cloud nine and we'll uh, look at the instructions how to do that. We'll copy this here to uh, log into it. We'll type yes and hit enter. And here we are. So let's type uh, uname minus A. So we can see that uh, we're running Linux kernel uh, 5.10. We're using Yocto to compile this uh, Linux kernel. And then let's take a look at the operating system. So here we can see that we're running Ewell. So it's edge workload abstraction and orchestration layer. This is the first uh, release of Ewell uh, and there are links to uh, the Meta Ewell uh, project um, under uh, section seven that we'll get to later. Um, and uh, Seb has been working hard on getting this enabled in the cloud. Um, so Seb, would you like to uh, share a little bit more about this uh, and what people can expect to hear about um, Ewell in the cloud coming for moving forwards? Yeah, sure. So um, we're actually planning after Dev Summit to work together with AWS to produce a blog post together. It'll be somewhere on the AWS um, blog. Uh, detailing how we constructed this uh, AMI image, uh, starting with Yocto, um, how you, uh, and applying Ewol on top of that, and then how to build that and deploy that as an image that you can boot on on um, on a Graviton two, and then how you can also uh, build images with uh, Yocto that you can build on other ARM devices. Awesome! Thanks for that, Seb. All right. Uh, all right, now it is time to trigger the build. So we want to uh, do a git push uh, and push the code uh, to code commit. But first we want to clone uh, the repo and we'll also exit out of this uh, AMI. So now we're back in our Cloud9 environment. So We'll change the directory to environment, and then we will uh, clone the repo. Uh, and it's an empty repository. So we will take the code that we uh, cloned um, a couple of stages earlier in, in the workshop, and we will paste it into this uh, uh, repo that we just cloned. And then we want to add commit and then push uh, these, these changes. Uh, that, or push the code that we just um, copied over. So now let's take a look uh, in um, the build pipeline to see if 
we uh, successfully kicked that off. So let's do. code pipeline. And then we see, you can see that's in progress. Here we can see the execution ID. And so once this is completed, um, it, it will um, push this newly created container image uh, into uh, Amazon ECR. Um, so this will host uh, the container images that, that's outputted from, from this um, build pipeline. And once uh, we have access uh, to this here, we'll be able to um, pull this container image to our cloud instance or to our edge devices. So once this has completed, uh, we will be able to uh, um, run the workload uh, in the cloud. And then after that, we'll also run it at the edge. So while we're waiting for this to complete, uh, are there any more questions or any comments so far in the chat? Looks like so far so good. I think um, we're blazing ahead. That's good. So while we wait for this, maybe we can, I can show those links that I talked about for Ewell um, to give a little bit more context. So I'll just jump ahead here and I'll go to the very bottom. So if you would like to add your machine uh, and, and adopt Ewell, uh, there's a section here, uh, it's linked here in the end. Um, so you can add under the um, title, adding external machines and BSP layers. So CAS is used uh, to manage the Octo build. Um, so you set up, configure a YAML file, uh, and then you add my machine here. We'll also be uh, posting more about how to um, Ewell, how to add machines, what's it capable of doing. Um, so this is just a brand new uh, first release from, from, from R. And then here's the actual uh, Meta Ewell layer. As of now, it mainly consists of uh, a, a Docker runtime. Uh, and we'll be adding more and more features to it as we go. So here's a high level architecture of what Ewell implies. So it's this top layer here, and it sits on top of the Linux kernel. And um, it doesn't have to be system ready uh, firmware right now, but moving forwards, if it is that, it'll make it uh, very easy to deploy. And then these here are, are the edge devices, different hardware platforms. And what we'll be showing is uh, the Graviton 2 in the cloud, and then also uh, the Ava developer platform. Okay, let's take a look and see. Uh, all right, it succeeded. Excellent. So the build is now complete, um, and the container uh, should now live in our container registry. So now we come to the next step where we want to uh, come back into our um, Ewell AMI that's running on the Graviton2 instance. Uh, and then we want to do a Docker pull to pull the newly created container image. We'll copy this command here. Um, this will give us a Docker login command that we'll need uh, later to, to get access to uh, the container image. So we'll paste that there. And then 
uh, I'll run this command. And this here, Docker login, this is what we we'll, we'll want to use on our um, uh, AMI uh, so that we can access the, the container registry. So we'll scroll down a little bit here. Uh, we'll copy this command uh, that let us uh, access um, the AMI again that we showed previously. So I'll copy this command here and paste it. And we'll wait a little bit. Uh, we'll see login succeeded. That's great. Now we'll, uh, we'll want to copy this here. And finally this here. And next it's time to pull the Docker image. So we'll, we'll copy uh, this command and we'll paste that. And now we can see that the um, container image is now being downloaded to our uh, evil AMI, um, so evil running in the cloud on a Graviton2 instance. This might be a good moment to answer one of the questions that we got in the Discord. Um, somebody's asked, will the workshop studio section stay posted? Um, and I think the answer to that is yes, we, the, the workshop instructions are going to stay live. Uh, the free accounts will end after one day after this session though. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and I've also run this a couple of times on my own private um, AWS account. And the costs are, are very low, um, maybe a couple of dollars per um, full workshop iteration. So yeah, I highly recommend doing that um, using the event engine, of course, until tomorrow uh, evening or afternoon, depending on where you are. And um, if you want to run it again, yeah, just use your own AWS account. Uh, So is there anything else um, anyone would like to bring up now uh, while we're waiting for this to pull? Oops, <laughs> of course it just finished there. So um, I'll move on because there'll be a, a little bit more um, dead time uh, when we deploy it at the edge. So let's take a look at um, how we, we now want to run this workload. So we want to create a folder called predictions paste that there. Uh, and then now it's time to execute our workload. All right, they're finished. Um, so uh, let's see, the next step is for us now to evaluate uh, these uh, results that we just got. So we'll exit out of the um, AMI and we'll click to the next evaluate application. So we'll change directory. Uh, and we'll want to copy over um, the predictions, uh, the results from the, from the AMI that we just ran. So copy that, paste over. So we copied this over. So now we have it in our Cloud9 instance. Uh, we'll set up the Python execution environment. Uh, and while we're waiting for that, we can uh, take a look at um, the images. So Cloud9 has a cool uh, feature here where you can uh, view images. So we'll select this one here. Uh, and so this is um, YOLO uh, V2 Tiny, uh, uh, and it's written, uh, drawn the bounding boxes around this truck. And what we'll do next is we'll, uh, we'll, we'll run a script, uh, a validation script to, to verify uh, and see how well this performed. And, and I do want to say that 
the purpose of this workshop is not to have uh, the uh, highest uh, accuracy uh, model. It's it's more a small manageable workload uh, that's that's uh, open source and available for anyone to download. So let's exit out of this image here, uh, and we will uh, start the evaluation script. Um, so I won't spend too much time on this, but but I'll mention um, the, the metrics here that are used to evaluate the accuracy of, of the workload uh, or of the model. Um, IOU uh, stands for intersection over union. MAP stands for mean average precision. MAR uh, stands for mean average recall. So I won't really explain these further, but I, I recommend you reading up on this after the workshop. Um, and there, there's good content about that. Uh, further down on this page. What we'll do though is we'll take a look at um, the, the image to see uh, the ground truth overlaid. So I'll double click on this here. Uh, let's reduce the size just a little bit. And here we can see that uh, the ground truth is the white box. So this is annotated by a human. And the, then the red ones here are um, the predictions from the YOLO uh, model. So next, we'll scroll down and we'll deactivate the environment here. The next section here uh, talks about scale with AWS batch. Um, we'll skip this section, uh, but I do recommend going back uh, and reading more about AWS batch. Um, this tool allows us to scale out um, your, the testing, uh, which will reduce the turnaround time for your verification. So you get a quicker, quicker loop. Um, and please to go through and, and re read through this section here. There's some really good content here. So let's hit next. Um, and now it's time to uh, deploy. Oops. There. Now it's time to deploy uh, at the edge. So the edge device we'll be using is the Ava developer platform. So let's skip to this here. Uh, and I have it, I've already SSH'd into the device here, so we can run. Uh, also, we're running kernel 5.10, Yocto, and let's check this out. So, we're running edge workload abstraction and orchestration layer, uh, the first iteration of this here. And I will uh, kick off uh, um, the Docker pool. Uh, and I'll rerun a couple of commands from uh, deploy container image so that we have the right credentials so we can copy those into our edge device. So I'll run this and this here. And I'll copy this command. And I'll paste it into uh, the Ava developer platform. Login succeeded, excellent. Um, and then we'll need to export these two here as well. And then the US region, or A, um, AWS region. Okay, and now we can skip back to uh, pulling uh, the Docker image. So we don't need to uh, SSH into it like we did in the AMI because we're, I already, um, on, on the edge device. So we'll copy that and we'll paste that into here. And while we're waiting for this, uh, I see that some of these uh, layers already exist. Uh, and that's because uh, I've run this once before. Uh, I thought I had removed uh, the, the image completely, but it seems as though it's cached some of the layers. So that um, made things a lot quicker. Uh, but before we run the workload, uh, I'm gonna switch over my view here. I'll stop the share. And then I will uh, show you the view because I have one right next to me. Uh, let's click here. Oh, one sec. All right. Can uh, everyone see this? We can indeed. 
Okay, excellent. So this is the Ava developer platform right here, uh, sitting right next to me. Um, so as if, I don't know if you noticed, but in the in the terminal it said COM HPC. So COM is short for um, computer on a module. Uh, and so this is, this is the module here. Uh, and HPC is high performance compute. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about this, the platform here. It's uh, called AVA Developer Platform. Uh, and it's a collaboration between AD Link and ARM uh, to create a developer platform uh, with commercial off the shelf components uh, to see the ecosystem with high performance systems for prototyping. So it's got liquid cooling uh, and under here, there's an Ampere SOC, uh, which is the high performance compute. Uh, it has 32 cores uh, running at 1.7 gigahertz. It's the Neoverse N1 CPU, uh, just like the one that's running in Graviton 2 in the cloud that we were just using. Uh, it's got uh, 32 uh, gigabytes of memory. Uh, there's a LAN card uh, and USB ports for uh, some extra IOs. It's got PCI uh, Express uh, for GPGPUs or other accelerators. And then here it's uh, it's got uh, memory, uh, it's M2 SSD storage. Uh, sorry, not memory storage. All right, I will switch my view back and we will run the workload at the edge. All right, is that visible? Is the uh, screen share working now? Yep. yep. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So let's go back to uh, running the command. So we will copy uh, and create um, a full predictions. Uh, oops. I'll just remove uh, what the content of that. Uh, and then we'll run uh, the uh, the workload. So now we're running the exact same uh, container image that we just ran in the cloud uh, at the edge. And let's take a look at here. Um, and a good exercise uh, would be to um, test, uh, run the analysis script again on this uh, and, and verify that um, you're getting the same results. You could copy that into your cloud nine instance. <clears throat> um, so this is the final stage of the workshop, uh, the practical part of the workshop, uh, and we can scroll down to the end here. Um, and if you want to add your own machine, so other than the Raspberry Pi 4, um, you can check these links out that I showed previously. And it's always good to do a cleanup uh, after you, uh, you've um, run a workshop. Uh, or done something like this in case you want to run it again so you don't have any legacy things uh, remaining. So I'll just do that in my AWS uh, instance here. Let's see, we want to run this. Excellent. And then we want to delete our CloudFormation stacks. So Alt S, CloudFormation. So this is the AMI, so delete, and then the build pipeline. And this is especially important if you uh, are running on your own AWS account so that you don't uh, get charged unnecessarily. And then we wanna delete the Cloud9 instance. So Alt S, Cloud9. So this is selected already and we'll hit delete there. And then we need to type delete. And then uh, this is the only things that would occur cost. Uh, so now we logged out of this, so it's gone. Uh, but you, a good place to take a look is uh, at EC2 dashboard. And here we can um, clean up the key pairs and such. And with that, 
Um, I will hand over to uh, Stefano, who will, or to Gil, or Stefano, who will talk about um, the last parts of, of the workshop and, and wrap yeah. up. Yeah, I Thanks. will take this one, Casper, uh, and uh, awesome, really. Uh, by the way, uh, the gods of Demos were with us today, so it's fantastically executed uh, and uh, perfect results. So, and quite exciting. So we just want to wrap up and uh, reconnect to what we told at the beginning of the workshop at a very high level. So what you saw is a way to accelerate really uh, cloud native development on ARM for the automotive industry. So we run identical container images, uh, both in cloud and at the edge, providing complete environmental parity at the container level. And then we run the same operating system uh, using the Yocto Linux in cloud and edge again. And uh, one highlight, as Luke did, that this is really an innovation for the automotive sector and in general to run this kind of embedded operating system in cloud native. And this will extend significantly what you can do in terms of BNB activities and soft hill, as I defined it in, uh, in previous slides. So environmental parity at OS level. The ARM64 architecture is used uh, across the cloud and edge devices. So there's an environmental parity in terms of instruction set and uh, or ISA parity. And finally, uniquely in this case, uh, we have uh, the same Graviton, the same new version one architecture in AVA and in Graviton. So essentially you see what we achieved. We achieved automotive software execution in cloud, bit accurate binaries across cloud and edge, and uh, we can really push the verification and validation at scale. Casper didn't went through that section of the workshop, but the, the section is there and you can go through that by your own pace. And you will see how the workload is executed really at high scale through uh, AWS Batch and uh, Elastic Container Services. If you go to the next slide, please. And uh, there are ecosystem implication of uh, what we just presented because uh, it's not just a technical exercise, but uh, we think that we can really enable a, a parity-enabled software-defined vehicle ecosystem. And we can imagine a case where an OEM is going to produce uh, its own OEM OS native AMI, right? And distribute, enable the access to this uh, AMIs, Amazon machine images with native operating system, native properties to his ecosystem of partners. And they will just create containers, right? But those are containers that have parity with uh, the environment that the OEM uh, set up and the environment that is in the vehicle. So the OEM can receive this partner software in a containerized form and uh, evaluate it, provide the verification, validation, cybersecurity assessment, and then deploy it when ready to the vehicle, leveraging all these levels of parity. So really the problem, the, uh, what we achieved is really significant in this perspective of creating an ecosystem based on this assumption and as a way to create marketplace software and distribute software in the system. So, and now I'm uh, passing to Gil just uh, to wrap up the session and uh, thank you on my side and AWS side. Yeah, thank you so much, Stefano. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining the session. Um, it's, it's been a great and, and long and dense session, so I appreciate you sticking around. Uh, hopefully, this was uh, interesting. Stefano already touched on, on some of the key concepts uh, that we want to, to, to take away. Um, and I'll just reiterate those. Um, first is the evolving technologies in cloud native. Uh, applicable for, for automotive and how uh, the SOF initiative is, uh, is, is driving and shaping that going forward. Uh, SOF is uh, entirely uh, focused on building open standards uh, and using existing technologies and creating an actual implementation first uh, mentality here. And, and uh, this implementation is actually what we use in this workshop. It's the EWOL. Uh, software stack that uh, was uh, mentioned and used in the demo. Uh, the second one and super important here is obviously the environmental part that Stefano was, was uh, mentioning. Um, this absolutely makes a huge difference um, in the developer workflow. Forget about uh, cross compilation. Um, it, it all runs native. You can front load a lot of your VNV 
um, and uh, using uh, the, all the scalability that um, uh, AWS services can provide. And, and finally, um, operating system and hypervisor uh, portability is, uh, is super important as well. Um, it's, uh, it's an efficiency uh, step that the industry needs to, to get to. And, and system ready certification is uh, the way we are uh, working with the partnerships and ecosystem to uh, to create a way to to um, enable uh, this going forward and and uh, remove uh, most of the porting efforts that goes from from one SOC to to the other. Um, so a few pointers for you if you want to uh, keep engaged. Um, the, the workshop, there is a link there. The workshop uh, will be live. Uh, this was explained before. Uh, you can go through the content on your own AWS account, or if you have the hash code, you can still use it for the next uh, 24 hours or so. Um, Sophie is uh, all um, in the open. Um, so you can follow around uh, the deliverables and evolution of, of that. Uh, get in touch if you want to, to participate as well. Um, and uh, follow along the uh, evolution of Graviton instances, which will, will bring um, yet more uh, exciting news for anyone uh, running automotive workloads um, natively on the cloud. Uh, and finally, there was a recent announcement from the AutoWare Foundation uh, um, on OpenAD Kit. Um, this is a uh, also complete end to end um, proposition um, for. Um, autonomous driving. So um, make sure you check out that is uh, compatible with the SOFI architecture to, uh, that we're putting out. Um, so that ties up quite nicely. Uh, finally, um, I just need to uh, again thank you all and thank uh, especially the AWS team. Um, uh, we are the uh, lucky or unlucky ones to be here uh, delivering the presentation, but um, the uh, team that worked in this workshop was uh, really massive and they pulled off a lot of work. So my huge thank you for, for Norm uh, and, uh, and AWS, I guess, uh, for, for all the all of you who worked on this workshop. Um, so that's what we have for the workshop. Uh, the next slide is just a few pointers of uh, additional content from at Dev Summit that will complete your picture um, on uh, software defined vehicles, uh, environmental parity, uh, and so on. So there's more content coming to tomorrow. Um, be sure to check out and uh, thank you so much for watching.